Hi everybody. This is Roma. Welcoming you to get on board the train of parables of Jesus Christ, the parables of the gospel. Guess what? Today's parable Guess the parable of today's? It is you guessed it right. It is about the bread. The leavened leavened bread, unleavened bread and the yeast cells mentioned in the gospel. In the gospel of Matthew chapter 13, Jesus speaks about the parable of yeast. Chap Matthew chapter 13 verses 31 and 32. The kingdom of heaven is like the yeast a woman used in making bread even though she put a little yeast in three measures of flour it permeated every part of the dough how beautifully jesus describes and makes all of us enter the domain of the first century woman and the household cook to gain the perspective of the domain of god yeast leavened bread and unleavened bread are mentioned both in the old testament and in the new testament in the book of genesis chapter 18 when The Lord appeared to Abraham near the oak grove of Mamre. Abraham spoke to Sarah, "Hurry, get three measures of your best flour and knead it into a dough and make some bread." What is the result of that? A great promise. A son is promised to Sarah. the lord spoke i will return to you about this time next year and your wife sarah will have a son what a wonderful promise it is in the old testament book of leviticus chapter 7 13th verse if you see peace offering of thanksgiving must be accompanied by loaves of bread made with yeast Here yeast is used as a positive symbol of permeating effect of the gospel. Sometimes I wonder why Jesus speaks in parables. In one way in the he speaks in parables. He followed the best method of storytelling which we speak about a lot about it nowadays. Best method of impressing upon the listener is storytelling speaking in parables at the same time in the book of isaiah chapter 6 9 and 10th verse says the lord spoke to isaiah go say to this people listen carefully but do not understand watch closely but learn nothing harden the hearts of people plug their ears and shut their eyes that way they will not see with their ear eyes they will not hear with their ears nor understand with their hearts and turn to me for healing this is the heart the de depiction of the hard hearted people at the same time in the psalm 78 Psalm of Asaph. The, the psalmist speaks. Oh, my people, listen to my instructions. Open your eyes to what I am saying, for I will speak to you in parable. I will teach you hidden lessons from our past. So that the Jesus is speaking to his disciples in parables. That's the reason. In the book of Exodus, chapter twelve, fifteen, 
God mentioned about the unleavened bread. Exodus chapter 12, 15th verse. While Israel, Israelites were still in the land of Egypt, the Lord instructed Moses and Aaron to observe Passover. On that day, God executed judgment on the gods of Egypt. The plague of death did not touch the Israelites as the blood on the doorpost was a sign. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. That was God's promise. For seven days, they prepared the unleavened bread. In the book of Levit Leviticus chapter 7, it's interesting for those best chefs who make best cakes and ladies. Really, I have to appreciate and congratulate those. And all these recipes, somewhat recipes were mentioned in this book of Leviticus. Twelfth verse says, present your peace offering as an expression of thanksgiving Usual animal sacrifice be accompanied by various kinds of breads made without yeast. Thin cakes mixed with olive oil, wafers spread with oil, cakes made of choice flour mixed with olive oil. This must be accompanied by loaves of bread made with yeast. So yeast is mentioned here. Yeast cells are the fungal cells, living cells, they carry out respiration and they breathe out the carbon dioxide that makes the dough spongy with the porous and spongy. Augustine, a great scholar and great follower of the Lord Jesus, compares leaven as love. The activity of the leaven is a fermentation how it spreads to the whole dough, three measures of the dough, that is love. Leaven is compared to love and the women, woman was compared to the wisdom. Why does the definite quantity of three measures, three measures were meant, mentioned here. Augustine beautifully interprets the three measures in this way. The faith of a person, the faith of the believer, the three, worshipping the living God with three things, with the whole heart, with the whole mind, and with the whole soul. That is the faith. And also beautifully, the three measures are compared to the three degrees of fruitfulness. When the sower sowed the best seed, the good seed in the good soil, fertile soil. The produce was 30-fold, 60-fold and 100-fold. Then, as one receives the evangelical, evangelic leaven of the Holy Scripture and as the Holy Scripture works in a person, the believer shall propose our reasoning leading to prudence, our emotion of anger against vice, and our desire, our love for virtues. It can also represent the faith of a man, the faith of believer in the triune God, three measures, triune God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hilary Portia of Portia's compares the Lord to be the leaven and the woman is the synagogue. Sentence of death is a working of the leaven, working of the yeast cells and the bacteria that is compared to the working work of as Jesus carried out the works of his father, submitted himself to crucifixion, he was buried and on the third day resurrected and ascension of Jesus into the heaven 
to be seated on the right hand side of Father Almighty and then the second coming of second coming of Jesus Christ that is Maranatha Jesus is coming soon that we have to remember all the time. We see three measures are compared to the law, the prophets and the gospel. The law ordains, the prophets announce and the gospel fulfills. That is the fulfillment and when the Lord comes seated on the wings and he comes down and, and we shall enter into his kingdom. Let us seek the kingdom of God such that we shall and we shall be the heirs of God, Father, and we shall be the chosen people. Let's pray. Heavenly loving Father, we come to repeat this time, this moment, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Strengthen us. Bless us that we shall grow in faith and we shall worship our living Father, living God, with whole heart, whole mind, and with our whole soul. We shall be the, your worshippers. And like the leaven, we shall spread forth the word of God and fulfill your commandment. Go unto the ends of the world and spread my word. I shall be with you to the ends of the earth, your word says. We believe that you are with us and you shall guide us what to and teach us what to speak and how to preach the gospel of gospel. How to share the word of God with our people, with our friends, with those who do not know Jesus Christ. Be with us. Let the Holy Spirit guide us. In Jesus' precious name we ask. Amen. Amen. Thanks for being with me. Bye-bye for now. Till see you next on the next parable. Bye-bye.